Hello, Gun Nation. Big Johnson coming at you. All right, I've been asked this quite a bit. I've had a lot of time behind it, and I want to share my experience with you. Um, this is the POF Renegade Plus 300 Blackout. Uh, it is in the burnt bronze configuration. This is their, you know, I guess premium uh, model. It is ambidextrous on both sides, as you can see. I'll show you. Um, does have the nicer trigger in it. This is a really nice trigger. Does have the super nice charging handle in it. Um, really a fan of that you know it's got all kinds of areas to put your sling you can put it here here also both of those on the opposite side you can put it back here you can put it on your SB tactical brace um, all that good stuff I do have the phase 5 strap this is kind of a, I forget what they call the pattern but wanted something a little different so I put that on there purchased it um, and we're really going to talk about the uh, Vortex AMG UH-1 Gen 2. That's kind of what this review is about. I just wanted to show you the setup. I've got a Doughboy Tactical Sling on here that I purchased. Uh, trying it out for the first time. Uh, seems like a pretty nice sling so far. You can do a two-point configuration the way I have it set up, or you can change it to a one-point configuration. I'm still needing some more time behind this, but I did purchase, I believe, three of these. So... You know, just wanted to try a different sling. I've got Vickers and other stuff, but I wanted to try these. Um, what do I like about the uh, AMG UH-1? The cool thing about this version, the Gen 2, is it's all made in the U.S. Except, from what I understand, except the holographic side itself, the reticle, is actually made in the U.K. So, but all of the housing, everything else is all U.S., that's another reason I wanted the Gen 2. If you know me, as far as holographic sights, I'm not the most experienced person. Have I shot an EOTech holographic sight? Yes. Have I owned one? No, not their holographic version. So this is my first holographic sight. Also, keep this in mind, I do have astigmatism in both eyes. If you follow me, you know that. So when you look through some red dots, some of them are kind of a little blurry, blistery, Depending on your type of stigmatism, because as I understand, there's different versions, you may see things different like a comet, a starburst, things like that. So, holographic sights are fuzzy to begin with. We know that. But it's not designed to look at the reticle. It's to look through the reticle, just like a red dot. And, you know, the blurriness will kind of clear up. The more I've been playing with this and shooting it, that is true. Now, one thing that really does fix it completely for me is the magnifier. If I put a magnifier with an eye relief on here, I can dial it to my eye, and it really, really makes it look crisp and clear. So, without the magnifier, I was kind of like, ah, it's a little fuzzy. Not bad. A little fuzzy, though. But when I put the magnifier on there, it made it crisp and clean and clear. So, some features about this, as you'll notice does have you know this is the uh, battery port and does have a CR123 it's kinda cool here you just pull this out and then you can unscrew it and it is tethered and you put your battery in there so there's that does have a built-in you know um, mount so to say and it is quick release so you can snap it on there does have the relief cuts to relieve some of the weight your adjustments for your up and down um, or elevation and all that stuff is right here so it's easy to do on one side I do like that um, let's see here also the features on it and you really can't see it I tried to show it in the camera to see if I could see it and you kinda can't see it but you know you know what they look like if you have played with them before in order to turn this on you actually have to tap one of the buttons and then it comes on. Then you'll adjust your up and down. With a magnifier, it kind of can kind of can't get in it can kind of can't or, <laughs> excuse me, tongue tied. It kind of gets in the way with your magnifier. So you can come over to the other side, you can tap it with your finger, um, you know, such as this, but it doesn't allow a lot of space. So that's one con. Does have night vision? I do not have night vision, so that doesn't really pertain to me. In order to turn it off, you actually have to press both of these buttons at the same time to get it to turn off. That's another con. I wish it had Shake Awake technology. 
you know, which you could just pick it up and it would activate. Now, if you leave it on, it does have an auto shut off. I believe it's like 10 hours, I believe, if I'm not correct or if I'm not mistaken. But, um, you know, it will shut off automatically, but it won't come on automatically. That is one con. Uh, I do love the field of view. It's huge. I mean, both eyes open, no issue. Um, I did choose to put a magnifier on here. This is the Hollow Sun. When I got the Hollow Sun and it just snaps, there's no button. When I did get the Hollow Sun, I needed to raise it up. It does come with a riser. I took the two screws off of the Hollow Sun or was trying to, and one of them was pretty much rock set on there. <laughs> it broke three T10 bits, uh, Torx 10 bits. So I had to contact Hollow Sun. I have tons of Hollow Suns on their pistol optics. I've never had to use their customer service, and it was awesome. Sent in an email, contacted a person, told them what was going on. They said they had seen that before you know, they would send me another one out and then they would send me a label to send the old one in. And they did. I think I got it in about take total turnaround time was maybe a week and a half, two weeks at the most because they were actually out of stock, but they got them back in, held one for me and shipped it right out. So super quick, super easy. Customer service was great. Again, show you the ambidextrous features on the POF. If you want to see them, there's that. I do like the little touch here POF does. God bless America on your dust cover. It is unloaded, you know, bolts back, all that good stuff, safety's on. Uh, as far as the strap, I did get a phase five, you know, kind of a cryptic. I don't know how well that's gonna show up. I think it kind of goes with this color good. This is their burnt bronze edition. Special edition, I uh, do have the Q um, cherry bomb on it for my trash panda. This is actually the TLR9 Streamlight, and it's upside down. This is the pistol version. People will ask, what the hell is that? Why do you have it like that? This is also the POF um, little holder or little hand stop thing, and I actually like it because I can hook my finger in there. But when I do a C-clamp on it, watch. Got the C-clamp, can hold it on, actually tap it, keep it on. It's all done by my thumb. I kind of found this works really, really great. So if you've got a TLR9 and you kind of don't know what to do with it, because it is kind of big for a pistol, this is the perfect thing. And it actually does not show up through the UH-1. I can just see the very top of this rail and it just goes straight over it. So no issues there at all. That's a thousand lumens. Uh, let's see here. I do have astigmatism, as, as y'all probably know in both eyes. So when looking through this, it's kind of fuzzy, like holographic sights are. In order to clear it up and make it really precise, that's why I wanted to go with the magnifier with an eye relief. So you can adjust your eye relief to set it to your eyes, stigmatism, no stigmatism, and really clean that thing up. So shooting without the magnifier, not bad up close. When you start to stretch it out, it kind of blurs more. That's where the magnifier comes in. You flip it over, it cleans it up, and you're good to go. I've shot this indoor only at 50 yards. I think I've got about 55 rounds through it with supers and subs. Runs great. Super, super quiet with subs with the Q Trash Panda. I've got this little silencer co cover. I bought it at Bowers Precision Group and uh, the little cover. They had it in stock because these are kind of hard to find in stock. I wanted to have one made, uh, but this one works great kind of matches, you know, so be it. Also, if you're needing mags, check out the Mag Shack. These are their new 300 blackout mags. What's different about these? If you're shooting subs, it does have a lighter follower or different follower, a uh, lighter spring to uh, take care of your subsonic rounds. Anything with the FDE plate is the 300 uh, sub specific magazines. They are made by Lancer and really really awesome mags they work flawlessly with subs supers you can use any mag you want um, i have not tried this with supers just to test it i just did what they said if you're using supers use a standard ar-15 mag i used lancers uh, magpul some other ones but for subs i only used these and they worked great so check out the mag shack if you need mags uh, they actually sent these in for me to test them and they work great but, uh, you know, really like the charging handle a lot. It's kind of large. It's like a tomahawk. 
uh, that comes standard on this one. Also has the upgraded trigger comes standard on this one. But uh, it's not a cheap little package. However, I really do enjoy it. Um, does have this, you'll see this little symbol here. This is supposed to square off the barrel or something and make it a little tighter. Works great. Does have an adjustable gas block. That's the dictator if you can see it right through there. And it comes with a little tool to adjust it. I really didn't have to do any adjusting on it. I kind of clicked it a couple of times and it works great with supers and subs. So I guess that's locked in. Got the to Doughboy Tactical uh, the uh, sling. Goes into a two point or a single point. Uh, been testing these out about three of these. And so far I'm liking them. Got a little paracord action. But uh, do I recommend the AMG UH-1? Yes, it's American made. Like I said, the reticle itself is from the UK. Uh, it does have the lifetime warranty on it, no questions asked. You know, you kind of can't beat that. I think the price is pretty reasonable. And so far I haven't had any problems with it. Not only have I shot, uh, you know, those 55, 60 rounds, I've actually been doing a lot of CQB stuff around the house and out in the backyard, you know, testing it, throwing it up to my eye, putting it down, um, things like that. And so far, really enjoying it. This is my first holographic sight, and uh, I might even be buying another one. So, so far, I'm really liking it. But again, I'm not the tactical guru. I'm not the holographic sight guru. I'm just a guy <laughs> trying a product. Uh, and giving my honest opinion on it. So take it for what it's worth. But I appreciate y'all so much. If you have any questions below, please leave them. I'll try to get to all of them. Like, share, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. I put a lot of this on Instagram. Like I said, I've been testing this thing for, gosh, I bought it right when it came out. I pre-ordered it. And I've got a lot of dry fire time behind it. And, you know, some live fire. But so far, digging it. But I appreciate y'all as always. Remember, an unarmed nation is a very weak nation, so we all got to carry on.